It's good to see you. And I can't wait till I walk through those doors and see you face to face. We got a message from the conference this week with a plan that we can use to start working toward coming back together. Now, some of you may not be in a rush to do that, and we're gonna to continue to do these online worship uh, sessions, and I'll continue to work on several things to try to keep us connected. The Zoom Sunday School classes will continue. So today, let's worship God. Let's be thankful to be able to worship together even though we're apart.
Today I have several things that I want us to pray about. One of the things I want to pray about is the fact that we have gotten information from the conference that we can begin working towards gathering again. But I also want to make sure that we do that safely. And they do have some times that we'll be able to do outdoor worship and then we could transition to indoor worship. But I really, again, want to make sure that we do that safely and with much thought and prayer. So I want you to begin to pray about that and how we're supposed to do it. And also, I want us to pray for those who are suffering from addiction. Uh, our annual conference mission offering will go to dealing with the opioid crisis. And, and that is so timely, especially since Methodist churches all around here have not been able to be opened and they will not be able to have their AA meetings and Narcotics Anonymous meetings and, and their recovery meetings and those things like that. And during this time, there have been a lot of relapses. There have been a lot of people who've OD'd and that really struggles. And um, I wanna pray also for a special, I'll say colleague, but I'll also say sister in ministry, uh, Brooke Hartman, who uh, has triple negative breast cancer and is over the recovery ministry at our sister church, Powell. And so I want us to lift her up because that's on her mind right now and on her spirit to, to watch and these people struggle and not be able to, to help. They've been doing Zoom meetings and things like that, but it's really hard to, to do that. So please lift her up as she does chemo and, and other treatments and, and her family. And uh, with that said, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you're our God and we're your children. And that even though we're in different houses right now, we're in different places, we may even be in different cities. You hear our voices, you hear our hearts, and you take care of us. And even though we're separate, you bring us together through prayer. And so we're thankful that we can lift our hearts and our voices to you today as we pray together. We are thankful that as we have concerns in our lives and we know of people who are struggling, people who are, are mourning, people who are sick and trying to recover, you are there. And right now we wanna lift up to you the names and the situations that we have on our hearts right now. Thank you, God that you're in each and every one of those situations with each and every one of those folks that we're worried about. We pray right now, Lord, that you would continue to use us as your church that spread out into the world to shine your light. And though we long to be together, we are thankful that you can still use us while we're apart. And so continue to use us, open our minds and our spirits to those around us who need a special, a special treatment, a, a call, a letter, an email. Help us to pray for those right now who are, are just desperate in these times. We pray for our country. We pray for healing for our country. We pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for those who are mourning deaths those who are mourning the loss of their stores, those who are mourning their cities being in turmoil. And we pray that you would help us to realize that we are not helpless because even if we can't be there, we can pray. And so God, we do that right now as we pray this prayer in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today, I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 5th through the 14th verses. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have not failed the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I'm absent. That when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I would not recommend that right now. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. These are such powerful words from the Apostle Paul. You know, tests always make me nervous. Tests always make me nervous. And, and I, I always got the, that anxiety and the struggle when I was in, in school and had to take tests. And, and I know there are a lot of tests that, that I didn't do well on because I was... Not that I didn't know, but I just was anxious. I, did, I really had a hard time with my, my multiplication tables because I would have to stand up in front of the class and, and, and tell them. And when I would do that, I would freeze. And what was funny about that is my mother made a deal with my teacher that if they would pass me, I would go to her son during the summer and he would, he would tutor me. And the whole summer long, he kept saying, why are you coming to me? You know all the answers but I would freeze whenever the test came up. Well, I don't, I don't know that this is the kind of test that, that we should freeze up about, but I think it is a test that could help us to be freed up to be who God created us to be. I wanna tell you about a test that I failed and not a school test, but a test like this. It was almost 20 years ago when I got so angry one day that I went out away from everybody into the backyard and I just screamed and I screamed things I shouldn't have screamed and I felt a tightness in my chest and I felt my heart hurting and I felt like electricity coming out through all the way out through my chest to my fingertips and it felt like flame shot out through my fingertips and I don't, I don't know what happened there but I know that I lost it and I've never lost it like that before and I've never lost it like that since but when I lost it, I broke my own heart. And I walked back to the house. And when I walked in, Donna could tell that I was, I was in bad shape. And she said, well, what's wrong? What's wrong, honey? What's wrong? And I said, I have just gone out in the yard and I have just, just blown it. And she said, don't worry, nobody saw you. And I, I wept and I said, yeah, I saw me and God saw me. And I know I did what was not right. And she had to hold me while I cried because I realized that I had completely and totally blown it. I'm sure you've never done that. Probably not, right? Haven't we all? Haven't we all had a place in our lives where we, we just let go of all the things that we hold dear? Maybe we all haven't, but we, we've, all, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's just part of being a, a person. That's part of walking the earth. There's nobody here perfect except Jesus. And when Jesus walked, you know, he was perfection. And ever since then, we just need him in our lives. So we don't need to be perfect. We can just be covered with his grace and have his peace. 
And so you know, I'm at peace with what happened all those years ago, even though I still am a little bit disappointed in myself. Well, one of the things that has been special to me, I, I had to take Greek when I was in seminary. That was not special to me. I, had to, I just had to do it. And so when I took Greek, I found out that there are seven words in the, Old, in the New Testament for Greek. I'm not going to pronounce them all for you, and I'm not even going to tell you about all of them. But I'm just going to tell you that sometimes we just kind of lump all the sins together and we say sin. It's all sin. And it is. But in the Greek, there were seven different types of sin. There were things when you unknowingly did things. There were times when you knew full well what you were doing and you decided to go against what was God's will. There were times when, you know, you just kind of missed the mark. We know what that we know what that's like, right? And there's there's one that is my particular favorite. It's when we slip. And I want to tell you about a time that I slipped. I'm going to tell you that that I'm not sure exactly how to categorize what I did those almost 20 years ago. But I know it was sin because I know God was against it, but I also know God was for me. And that's what's powerful about the whole concept of sin. There's some people that, that try to preach sin in a way that beats us down. But just even Paul says in this passage that he did not come to tear us down. He came to build us up. That was true for them. That's true for us. But when I talk, I'm not trying to tear anybody down. I'm trying to build, build us up. And so I, right before I turned 40 years old, I decided to go out to the garage and give myself a haircut. I did that this week. I gave myself a haircut and I had a flashback. I almost have PTSD about this stuff because uh, I was in the garage this week. And as I, as I was coming up the back of my head, I heard the blade guard come loose. Well, it was a flashback to, the, to the, the Saturday before I turned 40 on Wednesday. So Saturday before Wednesday, but also Saturday before Sunday. And my birthday is August the 8th. And that Sunday was the first Sunday of the month. And that church had the tradition of every first Sunday of the month having Holy Communion. And so... At, on that Saturday, as I, pulled the as I pulled the thing up, I heard the blade guard hit the floor. And when I looked in the mirror, I had cleaned off the back of my head like a landing zone the size of a Hershey bar, just down to the bare white skin. And I went, oh, no. So I looked and I went, what am I going to do? And I, I ran upstairs and I showed Donna and Donna was like horrified. She went, <gasps> when she saw it. And uh, so... The thing that I'm so appreciative of is that I was in a, a large church with a very, very good staff. And so I immediately called Lisa and Lisa is as good hearted as they come. And so, and I'm terrible at phone calls. You, you probably know that about me. That's why you don't hear from me a lot on the phone. I don't mind talking to you on the phone if you call me, but I have a hard time making that phone call. So I drove over to Lisa's house and I called her outside of, I was hoping to see her outside, but she wasn't outside. So I called and I said, hey, hey, Lisa, can you come outside a minute? And she came out and I said, hey, tomorrow, could you do the prayer for me at, at big church? Because that's what we, we kind of called the, the, the real traditional service. And she said, well, yeah, I can do that for you. Why? And I had a ball cap on. And I turned around and opened it up and she went, <gasps> she saw it too. And uh, so I drove down the road and I drove up to the senior pastor's house and Darius came, I asked him to come out just like that. And I, I said, uh, hey, Darius, I'm gonna take tomorrow off. And he said, why? And I said, I turned around and showed him and he started to laugh and jump around. And he said, no, you gotta be there or I'll fire you. And I said, well, you're just gonna have to fire away because I will not be there tomorrow. And let me tell you what really happened there. I had already decided in my mind that I was going to go ahead to church and face it because I, in the children's sermon, I was going to talk about the word for sin that means to slip. And I could say, sometimes we sin, we mess up and we don't mean to, we just slip like this. And I was going to show them my head. Well, then I realized it was communion Sunday. And when they had communion Sunday, there was no children's sermon. 
So all that I was gonna be able to do that Sunday was I would, I would do the responsive reading and then take up the offering. And all I could see was myself walking down and getting the plates from the ushers and turning around and walking back to the altar and lifting the plates with a giant clear spot on the back of my head where all my slip could be seen for the whole world that was back there. And I knew that I would be a laughing stock. And so before I even went to Lisa's, I went to my barber that, cause what I would do is I'd go to the garage and cut my hair every now and then. And then I would go to the barber to get her to trim everything up and make everything look good. And then I would do the garage again. So when I went in to see her, she, she kind of gave the same, you know, gasp. And then she said, go get some shoe polish and put shoe polish on there. And all I could picture was myself in my, in my big robe with shoe polish, like sweating out the, the back of my, down my neck. And I thought, I can't do that. And, but if I could have taken time to actually have told the kids about slipping, I would have, I would have lived with it because you know what? We all slip. We all slip and fall short of the glory of God. We all miss the mark. We all do those things. And we can't get on each other. But the test is not whether we've slipped or whether we've fallen or whether we've jumped. The test is, is Christ in us? And I hope that we can pass that test because that's the test that decides whether we have peace in our lives that's the test that decides whether our life bears fruit. That's the test that decides whether we're just living by the, our, our wits or whether we're living by the Spirit of God. Whether the Spirit of God that gives peace dwells within us. Whether we are truly a child of the King. And today, my prayer is that we would be children of the King. That as we come back together again, that maybe we've given ourselves that test. And we realize that we are and we get together and we celebrate it. And until then, we'll keep celebrating it because you know what? We're here to build each other up, even if it's a little, little bit of distance between us physically. Spiritually, we're going to stay right on it. We're going to live together in peace. We're going to treat each other right. We're going to be of one mind, not one, not one opinion. Because I, I'll guarantee we're not of one opinion. But we can be of one mind, the mind of Christ, the mind that loves beyond opinion, the spirit of Christ, the mind of Christ that loves beyond sin. The love and the mind of Christ that forgives. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you so much that you meet us right here, right now. We thank you for the words of Paul. We thank you that we don't need to be too big for our britches, but we also need to be able to say, hey, we're yours and we are yours. And so God, today I pray with anyone that wants to say that, Lord God, I am yours. And I thank you, God, that, that I had that experience out in the backyard that broke my heart because it made me realize that I am fall fallible, that I can mess up and that I do mess up. But that's not, that's not causing you to quit loving me because you're in me and I'm in you. And I pray that for my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all.